I come in? Please, have a seat. I've come here because this is a matter of national importance. Really? I'm all ears. I think John Florio. Have you heard about him? Yeah, now and then. Well, I think he has been murdered. And do you have any suspect? Uh, yes. Whom? Shakespeare. What's up? John Florio was the greatest humanist in Renaissance England, a great writer, translator, who gave a great contribution to English language and English literature. Yet today, very few people seem to know him, and throughout the centuries, he has been literally forgotten, his personality distorted, and the great importance that he gave to English culture and language totally erased is the greatest fraud of English history. The murder of John Florio. He was born in London, spent his childhood in Europe, and when he came back to London at 18 years old, he soon established himself as a creative linguist, translator, editor, becoming the most significant personality of the English Renaissance of the 16th century. We need only glance at his contemporary reputation in order to judge in what high esteem he was held. He was patronized by the Earl of Leicester, Robert Dudley, Harry Riesley became groom of the Privy Chamber under Queen Anne of Denmark and her private secretary until her death. He numbered C. Edward Dyer, Ford Greville, Stephen Lawson, Emmanuel Barnes and John Lilly among his pupils. His works were prefaced with commendatory poems by such a man as Samuel Daniel Matthew Green. He was close friend of Philip Sidney, Ben Johnson, Richard Hakluyt, John Webster, Theodore Diodati, Gabriel Harvey, Edmund Spencer, and most importantly, Giordano Bruno. This was the story of a successful man who made his career a work of art from the very beginning until the end. And after his death, Florence's name resounded in England very often among the literary circles. Until something happened. What? What happened? He was murdered by Shakespeare. But how? Give me evidences. When the first books about Shakespeare began to appear, Florida's reputation began to collapse. William Warburton, in his 1747 annotated edition of Shakespeare's works, declared that by Holofernes is designed a particular character, a pedant and schoolmaster of our outward time, one John Florio, a teacher of the Italian tongue in London. From that moment, other scholars have followed him by asserting the same old legend in every Shakespeare book. Florio as the pedant, the silly teacher the Shakespeare loved to mock in his plays. <laughs> and they all agree, all Shakespeare's scars? Only one voice actually resented Warburton's hypothesis, and it was Thomas Spencer Pines, English philosopher and the editor of the Encyclopedia Britannica, who brought that Warburton's assertion was definitely the most infelicitous. 
that as scholar and man of the world, like Florio, we marked literary powers of his own, the intimate friend and associate of some of the most eminent poets of the day, living in princely and noble circles, honored by royal personages and welcome at noble houses, the such a man shall be selected as the original of a rustic pedant like Hall of Furnace, is surely the climax of a reckless guesswork and absurd suggestion. Was it? So they finally raised the absurd suggestion? No, Byne's comment was unheard, and Shakespeare's scholars kept writing these and other absurdities about John Florio. The one about a furnace was only the first of a long lasting list of insults precisely made to bury John Florio forever. Every time the name of Florio emerged in Shakespeare biographies, there was always a negative connotation applied to his name. The real John Florio suddenly disappeared. He was murdered and was replaced by another one, specifically a man who was beset with tempers and oddities which expose him more perhaps the animal of his time to the ridicule of his contemporaries. He was, in his literary career, jealous, vain, irritable, pedantic, bombastical, petulant, quarrelsome, ever on the watch for an affront, always in the attitude of a fretful park pine. Oh, Shakespeare scholars really like John Florian. These words written by Shakespeare scholar Halpin were copied and passed in future books about the bard from the 18th century until today. Even in the introduction of his complete collection of Shakespeare works published in 2012, or in Aixon's famous book, Shakespeare Lost Years in London, and many, many others. And what did Aixon say about Florio? The same Aixon in his book also wrote that Florio was not only the pedant Hall of Fairness, but also John Falstaff. So, from the silly pedant, Florio becomes the fat, vain, boastful knight who spends most of his time drinking. Doesn't make any sense to me. No, Shakespeare portrays Florio as John Falstaff because he makes a wordplay, false stuff. He writes, I am convinced that Shakespeare intentionally made his caricature of John Florio more transparent by choosing a name having the same initials as his, and furthermore, that in altering the historical name of Falstaff to Falstaff, he intended to indicate Florio's relations with Southampton as a false stuff, a misleader of youth. Why misleader of youth? Because he had bad influence on Riley, he wasn't the close, trusty friend, tutor the Harry appreciated. No, 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 Florio was hated by Henry and he had a bad influence on him. How? Shakespeare scholars assert that Florio spied on Henry. Why he had to spy on Henry? Nobody knows. They had no evidences that prove this speculation. Their aim was to portray Florio in a negative lie. So Florio is the pedant Holofren and Love Loves Lost, but he's also John Falstaff as false stuff, misleader of Henry, right? Yes. Excellent. Anything else? Yes, there's so much more. Great. Florio has also been portrayed as Don Armado for his Italian's affected language. Is he any good? No. Oh, sweet. So, 
So John Furrier is Holofern and he's John Falstaff, he's Donald Mado. Shakespeare loves to mock Florio. And it is not over. Jonathan Bade, in his The Genius of Shakespeare, suggests that, that the dark lady of the sonnets, the woman Shakespeare fell in love with and with whom he had a passionate relationship, was John Florio's wife. What? He suggested that the low-born but with the untalented wife of Italian linguist John Florio was the dark lady, the lover of not only Shakespeare, but also Henry Riesley, third Earl of Southampton, who was at the time the patron of both the linguist and playwright. This is disgusting. It doesn't matter. Every burn too. Another Shakespeare scholar takes up the case that the dark lady is the wife of John Florio, whom he names as Aline Florio. But there is no Aline Florio. Florio never had a wife named Aline. Saul Frampton of the University of Westminster identifies the dark lady as John Florio's wife, Avisa Florio. Avisa Florio never exists. She it doesn't matter. Florio was the cuckold, pedant, spy, false stuff, misleader of youth, quarrelsome, vain, irritable, a lovable man. Florio was not the great humanist or creative writer. He was the most ridiculous man of Shakespeare's times. And what about his works? First fruit and second fruit? So creative! No, they were just manuals for them. He was a simple teacher, the schoolmaster, the pedant. Yeah, okay, so what about the word or words? The first dictionary? They were small dictionaries. Gerald Massey, in his book Shakespeare's Sonnets Never Before Interpreted, his private friends identify, writes, that Florio wrote a small dictionary of the Italian and English tongues, and he's represented, obviously, as the pedant who had lived long on the arms basket of words and a teacher of Italian, which Florio was, and collector of proverbs and choice saying. That was the first Italian-English dictionary. No one ever reached such a high number of words. It doesn't matter. Moreover, Florio's name has been completely erased from the history of English language. Chaucer and Shakespeare are so frequently mentioned it, but very few mention the name of John Florio, who added more than 1,000 new words to the English language. But why do they always write about John Florio in Shakespeare books? Can they just write about the bard the leave Florio alone? Because they need John Florio. Interesting. What do you mean? Because Shakespeare frequently mentions Florio's works, his language lessons manuals, first phrase and second phrase, his dictionary, a word of words, Queen Anna knew word of words, he borrowed even from Florio's Montaigne. Shakespeare reads Italian books thanks to Florio, he learned the Italian language thanks to Florio. Florio is Shakespeare's closest friend. Thomas Bynes, when he wrote the Encyclopedia Britannica and the chapter about Shakespeare underlined that Shakespeare continued his education with Florio. He ended his chapter by writing that Florio was certainly a friend and literary associate to whom Shakespeare fell personally in debt. So Florio helped Shakespeare. So why he had to mock or insult him? I don't get this. I mean, if Shakespeare found John Florio so useful, why such a bad portrait of him, of his personality and his works? I, I don't get this. 
because if there are two friends, one is the great bard, the English hero, and the other one is his foreign friend, and the foreign friend teaches him the Italian song, reads him the Italian books, he instructs him how Montaigne, the proverbs, the euphemistic style. You are giving him too much importance, aren't you? So, let's treat him bad a little bit. You are not going to give all the glory to someone who is not 100% English, are you? What would people think of the great bar? Oh, I see. It reminds me of a story. It does have nothing to do with Shakespeare. But... What story? It's the story of Sherlock Holmes, who was killed by Arthur Conan Doyle because he had become too appreciated, too famous. So Conan Doyle decided to kill him. Maybe this is what happened to Florio. He was too appreciated, too popular, and so someone decided to kill him. In the last scene of the Reckenbach Fall, Sherlock and Moriarty, the good and the bad, meet for the last time and they have a fight. Maybe it's what happened to Shakespeare and Florio. Shakespeare and Florio metaphorically met for the last time and someone decided that Florio had to die. But the case is not close because there is one mistake that has been committed in this well-orchestrated murder. Which one? The people. When Sherlock died, people got angry and they gathered on the street asking to have their Sherlock back. So? And so Conan Doyle had to resurrect him and Sherlock Holmes came back from the grave. Maybe it's what happened to Florida too because in the last 20 years some scholars and people too seem to have rediscovered him and not as the pedant. No, 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 no. They are reevaluating the great impact that he had on English Renaissance. Are you saying that he's coming back from the grave? Florio or Shakespeare? That is the question, my dear Watson.